Thanks to the Token 2049 team for, for having us and inviting us to talk. Um, this is one of my favorite topics that I've done uh, quite a bit over the last couple years. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking about Polkadot in general um, and explaining what Polkadot is, what parachains are. There we go. Um, and getting into a little bit about Akala and what we're building um, for DeFi on Polkadot. So quick background, um, VP of growth uh, at Akala. The team's primarily based in New Zealand. Um, we've got people in New Zealand, China, US, South America, pretty global team. Um, and I've been there since about February. Uh, prior to Akala, I was at Web3 Foundation, so worked on the launch of Polkadot and Kusama, which um, I still spend a lot of time um, obviously helping to promote and educate uh, because there's quite a bit to it and, and quite a Quite a few people still need to kind of learn um, exactly how all of this stuff works. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to go through first Polkadot. I'll give a, a brief conversation around Kusama because it's kind of a critical component that you need to know when it comes to Polkadot. Um, I'll go over the existing challenges of blockchains prior to Polkadot and then how Polkadot solves those problems. And then some use cases uh, where um, Akala comes in. I, hopefully I'm not blocking the slides. <laughs> Um, so these are the kind of six challenges that Polkadot, I think, set out to tackle when, when Gavin, Gavin Wood uh, created Polkadot back in around 2016. Um, first and foremost, blockchains going back to Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, they haven't been able to communicate, which if you compare that to the internet, it's like the, the internet in London not being able to communicate with the internet in the United States. It just doesn't make sense. So interoperability or cross-chain is, is one of Polkadot's key focuses. Um, customization of blockchains. So blockchains historically have been built as kind of general purpose blockchains. So if you look at Ethereum, we're seeing DeFi, NFTs, gaming, all these different use cases being built on one general purpose chain. Um, whereas blockchains now are being able to be customized for specific use cases or applications. Um, another key, key topic here is the difficulty to bootstrap security. So as you know, with proof of stake networks, uh, these networks are secured by a group of validator nodes who help secure and validate transactions. But as an individual blockchain team, such as Ethereum, Terra, Solana, there those teams not only have to build their tech, but they also have to worry about recruiting hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of value to secure their network with those validators. Um, Polkadot was also created to help solve that problem by creating one set of validators for Polkadot and then letting all these other blockchains plug into that very easily without having to worry about um, security. Um, and then I'll, I won't touch on all these. The last one I think is really important is the bottom right. So the um, ability to upgrade without forks. So as we've seen with Ethereum, I know Terra just did a, uh, a blockchain upgrade last week or the week before. These are very difficult processes to update the chain. It requires forking the network. Sometimes that um, causes some trouble within the community. Polkadot was one of, the, one of the things that Substrate and Polkadot offer is the ability to continuously upgrade the chain without needing to fork the network, which adds the ability to just continuously improve over time instead of the chain kind of being stagnant. So I, I think this is necessary to just give background on Polkadot. So everyone here knows Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, Vitalik wrote the white paper for Ethereum, but many people don't realize that the white paper was actually implemented and coded by Gavin Wood. Um, so Gavin Wood built Ethereum. He invented the Solidity programming language that's still used today. Um, he invented the Ethereum virtual machine. We all hear constantly about EVM compatible, EVM compatible. The EVM was built by this guy, um, Gavin Wood, who then went on to realize that there was a lot of scalability challenge with Ethereum. Um, so he went on to actually leave Ethereum and came up with this whole concept of Polkadot that I'll walk you through today. Um, Rob Habermeyer, a good friend of mine, he, he also um, was a co-founder with Gavin, um, brilliant guy, and then Peter Shaban, same thing. Um, super talented developer, um, helped co-found Polkadot with uh, Rob and Gavin. Um, just, it, I'm just assuming some people here might be new to Polkadot if you're, if you're coming to this talk. So this is necessary background just so you can understand the lay of the land. Um, Web3 Foundation is who I used to work for. They're a nonprofit foundation uh, based in Switzerland, founded by Gavin. And then at the same time, he founded 
Parity Technologies, which is the primary like dev shop uh, behind Polkadot. So Parity is a, a super powerful organization of probably around 150, 170 people now. Um, and this is where all the developers sit. There's some business development teams. So if you're getting involved with Polkadot, you'll most likely talk to people at one of these two organizations. So Polkadot is super complex. Um, I've done a lot of thinking about how to boil it down to the most simple, um, the, the most simple explanation. And what I've kind of uh, you know, focused on is these two things that I mentioned before. So Polkadot helps connect blockchains together. And Polkadot helps secure blockchains. So as a team like Akala, we wanted to build on Polkadot because we can get our chain secured by Polkadot instead of, it, instead of having to go through that whole process of recruiting validators and, and all of that. So we get to focus on building our, our products. Um, common misconception about Polkadot. So Polkadot is not a smart contract platform. It's not a layer one. Uh, we actually refer to it as a layer zero because it connects a bunch of layer ones together. Um, and you can't build applications on Polkadot. So all these parachains that I'm going to explain, all these blockchains that are connecting to Polkadot, that is where all the action happens. None of these are live yet. So we're getting, I think, very close to the launch of parachains on Polkadot, which is ultimately kind of the, the, the end of the launch of Polkadot after four years of building this. So Polkadot is not a layer one, and Polkadot's not a smart contract platform, but these, uh, these parachains are, as you can see here. So um, at the bottom here, I mentioned that we referred to Polkadot as a layer zero. So this is a meta protocol connecting multiple layer ones together. As you can see here, we have Akala, Moonbeam, Astar we've got in the crowd here. Um, several of these layer ones are, are preparing for launch on Polkadot. Polkadot parachains are the equivalent to the Solanas, Terras, Ethereums of the world at the, at the layer one. And then, of course, going up one layer, this is where all the applications can be built. Um, a couple other uh, words that the team at uh, Web3 and Parity created when, when uh, building Polkadot. There's a lot of buzzwords and jargon that, that's involved in Polkadot, so I'm just giving kind of background on every, all the components of this. So the relay chain is the core of Polkadot. If you are aware of uh, ETH2 and how that will look, this is the equivalent to the beacon chain on Ethereum that connects all the shards together. And then the parachains are each of these little gray boxes here are all individual parachains or blockchains that are connecting to Polkadot. These are the equivalent to shards on ETH2. So at this point, I think it's, it's difficult for a lot of people to wrap their heads around like, what Polkadot is, what a layer zero is, because this is actually the first of its kind. There won't be a comparable network until ETH2 launches, which will also be that beacon chain and, and shard setup. So I, I already kind of covered this, but parachains, just to reiterate, they can be smart contract platforms. They don't necessarily have to be. They're layer one blockchains, and then these are all kind of inheriting the security of Polkadot. And then that diagram, if you just flip it on its side, um, just a, another important point to just hammer home again is that all the applications, all the users, all the liquidity on Polkadot happens at the parachain layer. So this is why I and many people are also very excited to get these parachains launched, because this is when the game really begins. Um, now, let's dig into one of these parachains just so I can show you um, what is, what is possible with Polkadot and the substrate, which is the development framework to build on Polkadot. Um, it's an interesting comment uh, from Ken Seif. We, we did a panel in New York, and he kind of compared um, what Akala is building to turning um, pro what we used to think of as products on Ethereum. Think about Uniswap, Maker, products like this. And at Akala, we're kind of turning those into features that are built into our chain. So. We've got like a, a DEX called a, a Kala swap. We've got a liquid dot staking product similar. Uh, if you know Lido, we've got a decentralized version of that. Um, AUSD is a stable coin, decentralized stable coin similar to DAI. Um, and we have several other components like oracles, governance, et cetera. But unlike what we're used to kind of with previous blockchains where these are applications built on top of the chain, we've built these products into the chain itself so that any application coming and building on Akala can leverage those products natively from the application layer instead of needing to build that themselves. 
And of course, we also have our, uh, an EVM environment because there's been so much great work done by the Ethereum community on building these DeFi products, getting developer, developer adoption. Um, we're, we're serving those needs and helping Ethereum DeFi projects scale to Polkadot via Akala's kind of DeFi optimized um, parachain. Um, just for those of you who might be interested in the, the technical details of Polkadot, um, I've mentioned a couple times, but Co Polkadot's coded with a blockchain framework that Gavin and the team at Parity created called Substrate. This is a Rust-based framework. Um, this allows us to build these parachains as heterogeneous uh, shards instead of with ETH2, these are kind of homogeneous shards that they all kind of act the same. This allows us to deeply customize what we're building at the parachain layer versus being kind of uh, forced into kind of a, a general model. And then um, the code compiles to Wasm um, from, from the substrate framework. Security model, I can be quick on this. So quite a bit of DOT is staked right now. About 64% of the network is, is staked among 297 validators. And the last I checked a couple days ago, 863,000 accounts. So tons of users in this community. Um, an another interesting aspect of Polkadot is that although Polkadot natively um, bridges or connects these chains um, without needing to wrap tokens and things like that, if you're a parachain talking to another parachain, it's much easier. But that doesn't mean that we also can't talk to existing networks outside of Polkadot. So in, in the Polkadot world, there's actually two types of bridges. Number one, uh, starting up here with Snowfork and Interlay, these teams are going to um, occupy their own parachain slot. So this is a bridge to Polkadot itself. And then any parachain in the, in the ecosystem can use the wrapped Bitcoin or the wrapped ETH assets from these bridges that are plugged into Polkadot. The second type of bridge is bridges that are coming in directly to an individual parachain. So we, uh, we got a grant from Compound to build a bridge to the Compound gateway chain. Um, and that bridge will go directly to Akala, and then from Akala can go on to, to send tokens or data to other parachains within the Polkadot ecosystem. Same for BTC and ETH. So um, let's take a quick pause from Polkadot and go on to Kusama, which is something that um, I, I had a blast working on. Back when we launched it, no one had any idea uh, what was about to, to happen. Um, but it's been, it's been a crazy run in terms of the adoption. We've got an NFT community on, on Kusama now. We've got, I think, two or three DeFi platforms or parachains launched, including um, our network, Karura, that launched on Kusama. But what it is, if you're new to Kusama, if you look at the graphic, uh, this is meant to show that it's the exact same as Polkadot. The architecture is the same. Um, the parachain setup is the same. The way that we inherit uh, security from the relay chain is the same. Um, the key is that this is meant to be a fast environment for people to try out products after they've been tested on testnet. They go to this mainnet to get an experience with real value so that if something did break or if there was a value loss, it wouldn't be as drastic or significant as it would be on Polkadot. Um, I'll explain this on the next slide. So, this is the traditional model that I think a lot of people are used to. You test things on testnet, and then you launch it on mainnet. But when you launch on mainnet, you're kind of like crossing your fingers, hoping that things work out that you had expected when you were testing it in testnet with no value. And then you go to mainnet, and say you're running a, maybe someday there's a $50 billion network. If you have a bug that you didn't expect on testnet, it could be quite catastrophic. So what Gavin and the team came up with was a, like a middle ground in between testnet and mainnet, where you can launch a product on Kusama, make sure everything's OK, and then take it to Polkadot when you think it's nearly perfect. So it's this new development model of three steps instead of two steps. Um, and, and a lot of parachain teams like us are utilizing this model. And it's already been significantly helpful um, in, in our launch process, getting to learn and it kind of do it once with Kusama so that when we do it on Polkadot now, We'll be, um, you know, not experts, but we'll be seasoned in, in some of these things that we're launching. So this is Kusama. Um, and like I said, we're running networks on both 
Polkadot and Kusama and will continue to run these in parallel. They both will kind of help make each other better and will, you know, everything that we launch on, on Akala will launch on uh, Karura on Kusama first. So this is the slide that I showed you in the beginning just to remind you and I'm going to now overlay the, the way that Polkadot helps solve these problems. I'm not, it, it would take too long to go through each of these, but I'm going to highlight some of the important ones. Um, and then at the end, hopefully we have, uh, yeah, we should have a little bit of time for questions. So let's go into customization. So this is an important one. And um, this is, when I talked earlier about this, I mentioned Substrate, which is the framework that people are using to build these blockchains. So one way I like to think about this is like a music equalizer. You can tweak some things up, tweak some things down to change the way the sound um, sounds if you're a DJ or a music producer. This is kind of how Substrate works. So Substrate is like drag and drop blockchain development where you can build these pallets or components that are all parts of the, the runtime or the consensus of the blockchain itself. And there's, there's, it's kind of like a menu, like a, a food menu where you can choose exactly what you want and then inject that into the blockchain. You have your own chain <coughs> um, kind of customized for what you need. Um, I showed this at the bottom just to show too that this list of pallets will continue to build and build over time. And these pallets themselves can be improved. So what this means is like a, a team like Akala or a team like Chainlink can actually come in, build a pallet. And then if you remember back to what I was talking about, being able to upgrade the chain without a fork, we can continue to make the chain better by adding more and more features to the blockchain um, and just upgrading our chain overnight without any kind of hiccups. Um, this is another piece that I, I think I covered earlier, but just to reiterate that we're able to build an EVM, which is, again, a pallet that we built um, with Substrate. And not only can we provide an Ethereum-compatible environment for teams looking to come scale out of Ethereum, but we also customized our EVM to be able to leverage Substrate. So you can see here that the EVM has access to all the products in our blockchain itself. So it's kind of a, a mix of the EVM environment and being able to leverage the power of everything that we've built with Substrate. And also, it's, it's compatible with everything that ETH developers are used to. So compatible for users and developers with MetaMask, things like Truffle, um, and so on. And I, I mentioned this a couple times, but I checked uh, a couple days ago, and there's been 25 runtime upgrades of Polkadot since launch. So just to compare that to Ethereum, for example, this is 25 forks that would have had to happen in the last year. So this is since we launched Polkadot, I believe, last summer. Um, it's, it's been upgraded 25 times. So like I said, just continuing to improve and improve as we go. So I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, I'm going to go into just, just to make this a little bit more real for you. I've talked about Polkadot. I've talked about Kusama, some technical things. Um, I know it's been kind of a head dunk into a lot of these topics, but I'm going to make it a little bit more real now as far as what we're building at the parachain layer and what, what I think the next year or two is going to look like. So one thing that I'm really excited about is our partnership with a U.S.-based fintech company called Current. So Current is our first uh, of, of many fintech partners that we're going to be working with to help bring DeFi as a service to them as a fintech company. So... What this will look like, uh, they, haven't, they haven't fully defined exactly what the product will be called or what the exact numbers will be, so I won't give a, a kind of an exact uh, you know, um, guess as far as what that will be. But as an example, what this will look like is one day, um, so Current has 3 million customers in the U.S. who are newer to the financial system using Current for a savings account, so they're probably earning around 0.5%. Um, one day, imagine that these customers then open up their app and it's going to say, would you like to sign up for this new type of account? Let's say, for example, a current yield account. And maybe it's 3%, 4%. Again, don't know for sure what that will, will look like in terms of numbers. So the, the user signs up for that. They all of a sudden have a, a, an account that's yielding them maybe 3 or 4%. Um, what's actually happening in the background is that all those dollars will go out of current um, into one of our on-off partners and convert it into AUSD, our stablecoin. And then that stablecoin will go into a Kala, into this yield kind of engine that we've built that leverages things like dot staking returns, 
a compound, like I, I mentioned, our stable coin, and generating yield for them that may be 12, 15 percent. Um, that yield will then be liquidated and sent back through our stablecoin, converted into US dollars, and then distributed to those current customers without them even needing to know that there's DeFi or crypto involved, because for most people, it's still very confusing um, what all of us are kind of working on right now. So this, for me, is really exciting as far as what these parachains are able to do, and also bringing DeFi to a much larger audience without needing to do private keys, public keys, MetaMask, all this stuff. Um, this is, I think, the, where we're going next as far as DeFi. And for us, being a DeFi as a service, bringing yield to fintech companies like Current. Um, this is just another slide, kind of exactly what I just explained, but uh, let's see if I forgot anything. Yeah, so I explained everything with Current, but very excited for this. We're kind of dubbing it as hi-fi or hybrid finance, so blending traditional finance or these neo banks with a DeFi backend uh, built on Polkadot. So last, almost last slide. So what's next for Polkadot and Akala? So if you follow Akala at all, we've been doing a little bit of um, you know, uh, you know, promotion and community building around our upcoming parachain slot auction. So I don't think I have time to go fully into this entirely different topic, but this is how you launch on Polkadot is you can't just launch any blockchain into one of these slots on the network um, kind of freely and openly. What's required is an actual auction against other parachain teams to bid dots in an auction. And whoever has the highest uh, bid in that auction actually earns the slot and earns the right to launch. I think what, what Gavin and the team at Web3 were thinking was, let's try to solve a little bit of that problem that we saw with ICOs, where anyone could just throw up a website, launch a token. This requires much more work and kind of helps the best teams rise to the top because there's so much involvement in the community. There's so much scrutiny on what you're building. So this is what's coming up next. We don't know exactly when, and I can't really give any dates because I'm also waiting myself to hear. But I do think it's coming soon. And this is when things start to get real. So we'll be competing for a, a parachain slot auction. Um, our goal is to win the first slot like we did on Kusama. And after this, teams will start uh, launching. So we, we should have uh, hopefully five parachains in the first kind of batch. And then from then on, they'll be just rolling out more and more auctions until we scale up to about 100 total parachains on Polkadot and 100 on Kusama. <coughs> so that's it. Um, I think I have, yeah, we have like five, maybe five or seven minutes to go through questions. So thanks for the attention. And uh, thanks again for, for having me, Token2049. Awesome, Dan. Great. Big round of applause for Dan.